Welcome to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Longbreak. Local business owners were recently celebrated at an event for completing the City of Cleveland's storefront renovation program. Program manager Terry Sandy says those who participate in the storefront renovation program end up with a fresh, dynamic looking building afterwards. The storefront program is a program where the city's intent is to make our neighborhood retail districts attractive to uh, new businesses and then to the residents and visitors that shop in those retail districts. So we do that by having a designer on staff. We design the outside of the building, keeping in, in mind the architecture of the building, the history of the building, and then we design new signage for the new businesses so that they can be you know, functional signage, but creative and make people notice them. Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson attended the event and congratulated all those being honored for successfully completing the program. We have neighborhoods that are trending, we have neighborhoods that are stable, and we have neighborhoods that are distressed. And it is key that we invest in each of those neighborhoods appropriately so that we can deliver to all the people who live in the city of Cleveland that quality of life they all deserve. That happens because of the people who are being recognized tonight making those investments in Cleveland, and it happens because of the CDCs who recognize the neighborhoods they represent and help to facilitate that. Each person that was honored from the program received a certificate and a photo with the mayor. Linda Warren, Senior Vice President for Placemaking at Cleveland Neighborhood Progress, is proud of the mark left on the city by the business owners who chose to reinvest in the looks of their business. The uh, parade of businesses tonight that we got to see who uh, have invested in their businesses and made uh, their neighbors even better, what an incredible, uh, proud legacy they have left. The Cleveland Clinic teamed up with Case Western Reserve University to create a new 132,000 square foot dental clinic as part of the Health Education Campus on Chester Avenue. The ribbon was officially cut recently at the dedication. Mayor Frank Jackson says why this school is a very important addition. It's very significant uh, because it is an investment in the city of Cleveland and it's an investment in the neighborhoods of the city of Cleveland that not only uh, creates these edifices, but it also creates the ability to provide state-of-the-art service, health care service, dental service, to the people of this neighborhood in a way that had not been provided before. Kenneth Chance, the dean of the School of Dental Medicine, spoke about the importance of their involvement with the community. Engaging with the community has been long part of our school's mission. That tradition has continued and expanded to this day. Since 2001, our students and faculty have provided two ceilings to thousands of our Cleveland school children in grades two, three, and six. More recently, we launched a mobile dental clinic program which serves elderly patients at assistant living residential day facilities in Cleveland and other locations. We also provide the city's high school football players with fitted mouth guards to protect their smiles on the gridiron. As someone who decided to go to dental school after seeing classmates losing teeth and other complications because their families could not afford care, these examples inspire me every single day. Our dental school is part of the Health Education Campus, along with the Sampson Pavilion. Together, we are going to set new standards for the use of technology in health education. We also will show other places innovative ways to teach physicians, nurses, and yes, dentists, how to give patients the kind of team-based care that markedly improves their outcomes. This dental clinic is a key part of those efforts and also advances one of our core values, service to our community. For more information, visit case.edu slash dental. The Cleveland Division of Water opened its doors to the Baldwin Water Treatment Plant 
as part of the National Drinking Water Week. It's a national celebration of the great gift of, that we have of good pot potable safe drinking water for the region um, and that's why we're here today. We have open house here. We're expecting maybe as many as 2,000 people here today to come and see how we do the process of making good water for Clevelanders. This is our biggest plant. Um, it's an architectural jewel here. Um, it came online in 1925, although we've had water facilities here going back to 1885. Um, and this is where a significant portion of our service area gets good water from this plant here. Uh, this is something that we look forward to every single year. The turnout is phenomenal. We have almost 2,000 uh, folks here going through as we really get to understand the treatment process and what we do here at the Baldwin Water Treatment Plant. We get to make a difference as it relates to the quality of life. And so for the folks to be able to experience that, see how treatment's done, the trivia questions, the things that we have for the kids is just absolutely phenomenal. All the hard work that everybody has done to make this happen uh, is, is no small undertaking. And so I appreciate uh, and personally thank everybody uh, for everything that they've done to make this a success. It's probably one of the biggest ones that we've had and uh, we want to continue to grow on that. So you get the free guided tour through our plant, but in addition to that, you also are going to be able to experience activities and demonstrations about engineering and hydraulics and chemistry, and all of it is fascinating and interesting. It's very engaging. Public Utilities Communications Manager Paula Morrison caught up with the attendees to see what made them decide to come out and what their experience was like. Mike, tell me, why did you come here today? I come back to see where I used to work at. I used to work here, I was an employer here and I retired 10 years ago and I want to see how the place is going and the different uh, things that they improve, the improvements. My grandson really, really likes water is all I can say. Okay. I also think that honestly, uh, this is probably one of the most important things that Cleveland does, making sure that we have clean and safe water. Um, I just, I like I finding about, about the water. water. We want to learn about the water. Do yeah. you drink a lot of water? Yes. yes. <laughs> I see you got your water bottle. Yeah. All right, so you drink a lot of tap water, right? Yep. yep. This was magnificent. I love celebrating water. As a local dentist, it is so important to have fluoride in the water, and I am so happy you provide this day for all the consumers in the city of Cleveland. For more information, visit clevelandwater.com. A rally was held on the steps of Cleveland City Hall in support of those previously incarcerated who are trying to start over with a new successful life in the city. Rally leader Charles C. explains the mission of the rally. Well, the golden mission today here, uh, which I'd like to talk about, is to make sure that Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, and the greater Northeast Ohio area understands that returning citizens deserve a second chance, and many of them can become responsible, contributing members uh, to their community, and they deserve a second chance. Ward 7 Councilman Bashir Jones also spoke in favor of Mayor Jackson's stance of offering job opportunities to those who were previously incarcerated. We recognize that if we want to have a better city, we must make sure that all people have the opportunity to be successful. Right. And when they leave that institution, when they leave that institution, they should have the opportunity to take care of their families. The Cleveland Municipal Court's Clerk of Quirk Office is still offering their In the Neighborhood program. We sent TV20 reporter Dan Monroe to the Friendly Inn for more information. By now you've heard of the In the Neighborhood program, where the courts come to you and you can make arrangements to clear up any traffic or minor legal issues you may have. I spoke with Public Information Officer Obi Shelton about the successes from the program. Every year we, we follow the people who come to our programs and we see how those cases develop. And we find most years that most of the people who come to our programs follow through and do something towards eliminating their, uh, their fines. 90% of the people who come sh actually show up to court. It's not like they come to us and think that it's gonna magically go away. We schedule them for court and they show up. All the different groups are represented. Parking and traffic, BMV, healthcare, 
as well as representatives from the Public Defender's Office and Juvenile Court. Besides the different avenues where people can get assistance, other organizations were available. Austin Taylor from the Clerk's Office says these organizations go hand in hand with the court groups represented at this event. Well, what we found in, in the neighborhood is it's a group collaborative effort. A lot of people want to come down to either get the payment plans or court dates, but there's other situations usually within the home that people need help with. So we want to give them other avenues, other areas of people to talk to so they can really solve the entire home issue. Sometimes people are maybe missing court dates because of an issue with child care. That's where we have child support and other parts that come in. Maybe some people have an issue with hunger, with food. That's a major part of it. So we found that if we're able to solve some of the surrounding issues that are happening within the home, that will also cut down on really the main reason why they're coming in today. Literacy in the Hood is one of the groups you can find at any of the In the Neighborhood events. The organization is now in its second year, and Executive Director Chris Matthews' goal is to get a book in the hands of every child who needs one. What we do is we go out, we talk to parents about the importance of reading to a child 15 to 20 minutes a day. And as you see here, we provide free books. If we are talking about Cuyahoga County statistics, if there are three children standing here, two of those children don't have any books at home. So collaborating with different organizations such as Clerk of Courts, um, the Cleveland Kids Food Bank, Seeds of Literacy, different organizations such as that, um, collaborate with them. Come out, pass out free books. That way we know that the children are in fact getting books at home. Cleveland's Public Safety Department is also a regular attendee at these events, but not for the reason you think. They are looking to recruit. The folks who are coming out here are people who are getting their lives together. They want to take their life back. And so that's the type of folks we want to work in our safety forces. One, people who understand what it's like to have been through something, right? And so when you come across others who are going through a crisis, you are more understanding of what that is because you've been there yourself. The In the Neighborhood events will be going on throughout Cleveland through the middle of October. For more information, visit cmcoh.org. For TV20, I'm Dan Monroe. Thanks, Dan. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back with some more TV20 news. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Welcome back to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Longbreak. The rotunda at Cleveland City Hall was filled with praise and song to honor this year's National Day of Prayer. open to people of all denominations. Grady Stevenson, director of Cleveland's Community Outreach Board, welcomed everyone to the rotunda and presented a proclamation. The day of prayer is a time for citizens to reflect on the teachings and the foundations of their faith in which they believe. It is a time to seek guidance and grace and celebrate the importance of faith in the lives of many Clevelanders and whereas promoting peace and fellowship among all members of Greater Cleveland Community and the nation, the Day of Prayer has been declared nationally every year since 1952. City Planning Director Freddie Collier also attended and he led a prayer over all of the government employees. Father God, I pray for our elected officials and city council that they understand that is you, Lord, who commands the blessings. That is in your power that they exist, Lord. Father God, I ask that you strengthen them, Lord. Father God, I pray for all of my colleagues in the Jackson administration, Lord, that you continue to work on us, work through us, and give us the wisdom that we need. If you missed this year's Day of Prayer celebration, you can watch the event right here on TV20. 
iconic sweet spot, Jack Frost Donuts, joined Council President Kevin Kelly and other local businesses in hosting a fundraising event to help those in need. We are here to try to uh, raise some money for families in the community and uh, Jack Frost has generously stepped right up along with our other sponsors that are actually too numerous to name but, uh, but just to name a few, uh, Fathead Brewery, uh, MCPC is here, uh, Pet Boys, the Gyro Guys and uh, there's a whole host of sponsors I would encourage you to check out. But the, the point is to have a community event so that we can raise funds for some members of our community that might not be able to get to the zoo, might not be able to get there on the free Mondays and uh, really just promote all the assets that we have in our community. Jack Frost spokeswoman Jamie Kinton also agrees on the importance of bringing businesses together. I think it's super important for local businesses to get involved. Jack Frost is a local business, you know, we're homegrown here, and so we obviously like to bring other small businesses together um, because we really need everyone's support to make ourselves a success. So that's why I feel like it's really important, and so far it's, it's pretty good, it's, it's going great. For more information, visit jackfrostdonutusa.com. The Boys to Men Empowerment Summit brought a variety of resources to young men here in the Cleveland area. We sent TV20 special correspondent Errol Porter to the Galleria to learn more. Hello, I'm Errol Porter, reporting for the city of Cleveland TV20, and today I'm at the Galleria for the Boys to Men Health and Empowerment Summit. I know it the amount of energy and heart and passion it takes to do something like this and tell us about what gave you the passion to start doing this. So it had to be about eight years ago in 2011 one of my mentees said hey there's a lot of great resources in Cleveland but how do we get kids connected to these great programs they just don't want to go so from that question um, that inspired me to work with just volunteers who are friends family or colleagues just pull together all our resources into one location so young people and adults could try out these programs and so they can get connected. So that was in 2011 for the Girls Health Summit. So now we are on our seventh Boys Health Summit. So 15 summits later, we've done eight Girls Health Summits and seven Boys Health Summits. Okay, anytime something's happening in Cleveland, the publicist of the year, Tracy Potts, is always there and always for a great cause. Anytime they're doing stuff for the kids, the youth, anything, you're right there front and center. Tell us what's happening today. Hey, of course, Errol, absolutely. I had to come out and support the Boys to Men Health Empowerment Summit. It's the seventh year. This is our first year here at the Galleria. It's a lot of space. It's huge. It's over 300 boys here, young men over in the back. They're getting free haircuts. Um, we had keynote speakers. It has been a phenomenal day, and we are actually just getting started, so I'm honored to always be a part of something great for the city of Cleveland. Okay, I stepped into a place where everyone's looking great. <laughs> Waverly Willis is here. He's uh, coordinating the uh, free haircuts today. Tell us how that's going. Yeah, we partnered up with All About Your Health. Uh, this is the Urban Barber Association. It's a team of barbers and barber students that go around the city and give back, and it was a great opportunity for us to not just give a kid a free haircut, but while we're doing it, we want to plant, them, plant seeds of positivity, have some good, genuine conversation, no profanity, things of that nature. Now you got a haircut from your hair at the summit today. Tell us what it means to be here, and, and what kind of advice did they give you when you were getting your haircut? Um, it felt good to me, like, I don't have to pay for a haircut, it's just free, it's just there when I get to use it. Mm -hmm. um, now, now did the guys, when, they, when you're getting your haircut, were they talking to you, giving you a little words of wisdom? Yeah, they were talking to me like, what what sport do you play, mm -hmm. where do you go to school? What's the importance of bringing your son to an event like this? Um, basically the importance of me bringing my son so he can learn how to become his age bracket and learn how to become more of a, a teenager to a, a, an adult. Uh, the importance of hygiene, the importance of eating well, the importance of getting a haircut, grooming yourself, and learn how to uh, have some integrity in his life, continue to grow with some, uh, with some uh, uh, attitude of gratitude. Our registration is open, so please stop by the table. All right, I grabbed this man right out of a swimming pool. 
to come out here and talk to me in there, take historical lessons, and there's a lot of other things going on here at the YMCA. Tell us the great things that are possible here. Every single day. Uh, well, uh, we're very proud to uh, uh, help sponsor, along with the Galleria, the Boys to Men event today, the seventh uh, wellness uh, summit. Um, but the YMCA downtown here, we, 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 we're very involved in the community. Our motto is that we help families live better, uh, both uh, in all ways, uh, mind, body, and spirit. All right, I want to thank you for spending some time down here at the Galleria at the Boys to Men Empowerment and Health Summit. We hope to see you next year. I'm Errol Porter, reporting for the City of Cleveland TV 20. We are Cleveland. The Greater Cleveland Food Bank opened its doors once again for the annual Market at the Food Bank, benefiting the Harvest for Hunger campaign. President and CEO of the organization, Kristen Warkoza, explains how the event benefits the campaign. <laughs> this is a big event. You know, we transform our food distribution center once a year into a party center with all of these guests and all of these chefs. And truthfully, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of work for our team. Our team's been setting up since Friday, um, and the place looks beautiful. So this is a wonderful opportunity to see the food bank in a different light. Ward 14 Councilwoman Jasmine Santana was the first time celebrity server helping out at the Westside Market Cafe table. Though it may be her first time at the event, it's not her first time with the food bank. I've worked with Food Bank in the past, just, you know, um, when I worked at the nonprofits and in my neighborhood, right? They serve a lot of the families in my neighborhood. So it's something that's it's vital, it's, it's critical to have in our neighborhood. You would think, sometimes people think that um, everyone eats and has food, and not everyone has that opportunity. A lot of our families are impoverished. So to have the Food Bank there giving food out to families is very important. So to be honest, I had no idea that where I was walking into. I was just here in my, I was going to serve people and I'm a celebrity server today and when I walked in just to see so many people out here giving back and you know um, and don donating and serving people to raise funds to, re to feed families is very exciting. It's, um, I am overjoyed and I'm excited that I am here today. I had the honor of celebrity serving alongside Councilwoman Santana assisting at the Shorby Club table. Executive chef Charles Lowenkamp was thrilled to help get involved this year. I, I, this is my first time doing this one. I didn't realize how many high-end chefs and celebrity chefs there are from the, uh, the Cleveland area involved here. So I've seen a lot, of, a lot of people I haven't seen in a long time. Oh, it's, it's, it feels good to be a part of the, the entire, and like you had said, this is my first time here. I didn't realize how, how big this was, how unique this location is. It's uh, pretty impressive kind of a little bit overwhelming. I didn't realize they had this much here and this much to offer. Every one dollar donated to the food bank equals four nutritious meals for local families. This year's event raised more than three hundred and forty seven thousand dollars for the Harvest for Hunger campaign. For more information visit greatercleelandfoodbank.org. That's all for your TV 20 news. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Longbreak. Up next we'll have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report.